Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, bond fund or bond portfolio? People get muddled between the two. They think, are they the same, are they different? So let's take a look under the bonnet and look at some of the pros and cons. Now, the question is, I suppose, first of all, why bonds? Why would you even want to buy a bond in the first place? What do they give you that say equities don't or, or cash doesn't? Well, quick reminder, very quick reminder. Money goes in when you buy a bond. You get a regular income in return, usually a fixed income, over a set period at set intervals, and then you get your money back at the end, right? assuming the issuer doesn't default in the meantime. And that means that unlike equities, there's a certain amount of predictability here. If you buy a bond, hold it all the way through to maturity, you know exactly, down to the nearest penny effectively, what your return will be. And that's quite neat. That's quite an attractive feature of bonds, which is not true of equities. And usually that return is above the equivalent cash return, let's say. So key features then could be summarized as a predictable fixed income. So if you're thinking, you know, do I want to buy bonds at all? A known redemption maturity date. Relatively low price volatility. Now, not all bonds are created equal. Some are riskier than others. But as an asset class, relatively low price volatility. And a known total return held all the way through to redemption. So you're thinking, right, I do want bonds. So how am I going to buy them? Now, buying one by itself, not a good idea. Just as buying one equity, not a good way of playing the equity market. Too risky. Eggs in one basket. So, how else could I do it? Well, basically I'm suggesting two other options. One is a portfolio of individual bonds. I've suggested maybe 16 here, but that's not a prescribed number. All right, 15 to 25 perhaps in a diversified portfolio. And there is your bond portfolio, with you being able to see all the components that are in there. You can see what's going on under the bonnet, if you like. Or you could just say, no, I'll hand my money over to a bond fund manager. I'll let them worry about what's under the bonnet. So, in making that choice, what are the factors to consider? Let's do some sort of pros and cons, if you like. Bond funds first. Now, there are lots of them around, heavily marketed. You get instant diversification, often very, very wide diversification, because they're holding lots and lots and lots of bonds. Low minimum investment sizes, which is relatively straightforward to get in and out in most market conditions. And you're offered management expertise, and that can be attractive. On the flip side, you don't really know what's under the bonnet. You're leaving that to the fund manager. The income stream can therefore actually be unpredictable. Although they are buying and selling fixed income securities most of the time, you don't know exactly the timing of those purchases and sales and so on, so the income stream can vary. You've got a lack of control over purchases and sales. It's not your job. You've handed that over to the fund manager. And if there's a rush for the exit, you may suddenly find that the fund manager's dumped all the stuff that's easy to dump, kept all the stuff that's less easy to dump, which changes the underlying profile of the fund somewhat, and management charges can eat into returns. So things to weigh up when you're looking at bond funds. So, similar idea when we look at bond portfolios, pros and cons. On the flip side of this bond portfolio, you've got full visibility over the portfolio constituents. You know what's under the bonnet, or you have a say in what's under the bonnet. The amount and timing of income is known. You've got control over purchases and sales. You have known maturity values and they're visible. And interest rate risk can be largely eliminated in the sense that if you're buying bonds or someone's buying them on your behalf that you know will be held to maturity, you've got that degree of control over the portfolio, then you are not interest rate sensitive in the conventional way. Now on the flip side, there is a bit more effort required to put these things together. Um, it may be that you don't achieve quite the same breadth of diversification as you would with a bond fund, but then arguably a lot of bond funds over-diversify more than is needed. And with both funds and portfolios, there is some liquidity risk in certain markets and or for certain bonds. But that's true on both sides, arguably. So, question then reminds, well, you know, when is this potentially pretty useful? Let me give you one scenario to finish off this video. Imagine you are somebody who's got an investable sum and you're looking to get it to work and you want a regular defined income stream and you know when you need your money back and you want a reasonable degree of certainty that it will come back. If that's you, then potentially a bond portfolio gives you fantastic visibility over income, the final capital sum, the tax position, and overall risk. So, bond funds have their place, bond portfolios have their place, but I wouldn't like you to think they're exactly the same, and hopefully this video has clarified some of the differences.
Any questions, editor at killick.com. And if you're ropey on bonds and want to see some more videos on this topic, please click the bonds tab at killickexplains.com.